Hey guys, so today I wanted to share a bit of a personal experience with you. I've said to a lot of people recently that, and even in a recent Q&A, that I follow very strict rules when it comes to the paranormal, and that is that I won't try to contact anybody that I love, like any family or friends or anything like that, because I feel like it opens you up emotionally uh, too much. It, it makes you very vulnerable because you're so connected to the person you're trying to contact. So if there were ever an entity around that felt like it needed to take advantage of you, then you're as open as you're ever going to be. And I don't think it's worth taking that risk. I've always recommended that if you wanted to speak to somebody that you loved, you should do it through a, a clairvoyant or a medium or someone that, well, they essentially take that risk for you. They're not connected, so it's a little bit easier for them and it's it, there's just less risk all around. And the reason I want to share this story with you today is because I wanted you to know that I I don't say that lightly. I do 100% understand where you're coming from and I know what it's like to really want to speak to somebody that you love like, because you never got that opportunity to really speak to them again. And um, yeah, so I, d I, just, I just wanted you to know I understood where you're coming from. So about two years ago, uh, my dad passed away. He had lung cancer and during his treatment, he... he contracted pneumonia and he he died from that and the thing is with my dad he was he's the kind of person that even when he told you that he had cancer he's like it's it's no big deal he says it's like any other illness he says you catch it you cure it and then you move on he says you just fight it like anything and once it's gone it's gone it, it's it's you know what i mean and so he came into it with such positivity all the time that you never really took it seriously or at least I didn't and I think a lot of my family were the same like you never realized how serious it was now I wasn't living with him I was away at uni when I found out so I was I was distant enough to not know the truth of it and so when I finally got the call saying he'd, he'd gone into hospital with pneumonia I was like it's pneumonia he's had pneumonia before I've had pneumonia before he says he's a, he's a tough guy he'll he'll be fine I never even thought for a second that this could be my last opportunity to see him. Now, my problem was that I hadn't spoke to him nearly as much as I should, and I knew that. And so me and Shauna, we, we headed down uh, to visit him. And before I got there, he'd had seizures and he was in a, he was in a state where he, could, he couldn't, he couldn't talk back. He could speak to him, he was lucid enough to understand, but because he was in and out of sleep, he didn't even get to get that much communication with him. So there was no back and forth and very little speaking to him. And I think this is something that a lot of people can relate to, is that that is the point where you regret every time you never pick that phone up to try and speak to them. You never, you regret every time you didn't text them back or, you know what I mean, your mind just goes for it. And even then, I had no idea that this would be it. I was still confident they'd be fine. It wasn't until the next day when I saw that his situation wasn't getting any better that I realised what was going to happen. And he passed away that day. And to this day, it's not something that I've fully gotten over. The re like, they say when, when, when a loved one passes away that there, there is there is a moment where they will they will often visit you to let you know that they're okay. So they'll they'll come to you in a dream, or something will happen around the house. You've got to have heard stories of things happening around the house. Now I never had that. I I, I personally never had that. Like some of my family, they they all described dreams where they'd seen him and everything was fine and they were feeling a bit better about it. But I personally dis I just didn't believe it or not. And it's it's. It always struck me as funny, like my dad was never a religious person, um, but he was he was kind of like me, he was very into sp spirits and things like that, so he did believe in ghosts, and he had a couple of stories himself, uh, ghost stories that he shared, and now his stepdaughter at the time, when he was in hospital, and you know what I mean, he was in a point where we weren't sure what was happening, everyone's crying, everyone's upset, and she turned around and she says, I don't know what you're all upset around about because he will you watch he'll be back home on the 4th of March now she was like very specific about like the 4th of March and like it, it seemed odd at the time but we were just like oh bless her you know what I mean she don't she don't understand that sort of thing <clears throat> and what's really strange is when when he did pass away 
Um, it was it was nowhere near the fourth of March. It was like two weeks before, <clears throat> and they started arranging the funeral. And now, I don't know about where everyone else is, but two weeks is a long time to wait for a funeral um, after somebody passes, or at least in the the funerals that I've been to, I've never it's never taken two weeks. But in this instance. It was it was so busy at the time, I guess, that they said, "I'm sorry, this it's going it's going to be it's going to be two weeks before this funeral happens." And funny enough, the funeral fell on the fourth of March. And now my dad had spoken to my auntie, and they'd made all sorts of arrangements. And one of them arrangements was that he wanted his body to be transported to the house, so that it could be it could be taken from the house to the cemetery, and that that struck us all because then when we got the date like we didn't get the date for about two days after uh, everyone got told that oh yeah the funeral's gonna be on the 4th of march and suddenly it just hit everyone it's like hang on like what what are the chances of us saying he'd be he'd be back home on the 4th of march and so you kind of get that i don't know like there was something else at play there and i think she she was sensitive enough to to recognize something but didn't realize quite what she was recognizing and i thought it was an interesting story and i do have a number of them about my family uh, in similar situations and i just thought i thought that was an interesting one to share with you and kind of relevant um but before i finish this video off guys I, a couple of you asked if i would ever share a video of me playing the guitar and like this is obviously it's a very it's a paranormal channel and it just didn't seem relevant at the time but about a year after my dad passed away I did write a song and it kind of it, it really does describe exactly how I feel about um, being able to speak to him and so I thought in, in this instance I think it's it's as relevant as it's ever going to be um, to share this with you and now this is a uh, this is quite scary because only my closest family and friends have really heard this song. I don't really play the guitar in front of people, like, ever. And I do sing a little bit, so uh, do bear with me. But I thought I'd share this with you now just so you can, you can see where I'm coming from. So give it a watch, guys, and let me know what you think. A hundred miles away when I got the call That you had been taken into hospital And you'd been pretty sick for about two years But how sick I had no idea So my fiancé came to pick me up So I could see if you were doing alright And we drove to the hospital through the night And it was there, got the shock of my life And all I ever wanted to do Was to get another chance to talk Fighter, 